PlayStation 3's digital-only library spans over 750 titles. Chances are likely, if you're into PS3 emulation, at some point you might actually want to play one of these, but you're not going to find it in a JB folder format or a disc image. You're going to need something special, and let's take a look at that today. Stick around. Hi everyone, Shane Armonro here, and today we're gonna to take a look at Super Stardust. This is a digital only title. I've already downloaded it and I cannot tell you where to get it. You'll have to find it yourself. But it comes inside the zip file with a couple of files here. Don't really look like anything, but if you're trying to do the traditional PS3 emulation, you'd go to your ROMs folder, PS3, and inside of a folder called the name of the game.ps3, you would stuff the files in there and hope that it worked. So we're gonna grab those files and we're gonna stuff it in the folder, move them, and then we'll take a shot at trying to run it with Emulation Station. Once in Emulation Station, we go to PS3, there it is, SSD, and it doesn't launch. Okay, well, we knew that was gonna happen, right? <laughs> so let's get out of here and let's go see what we have to do. All right, so these two files here is, are packages and wrap files. Package is the binary. This is where all the game content is. The wrap file is like an entitlement key or an authorization file that says you're allowed to have that game running on your PS3. So since these are not JB folder type items, they're not disk images, we're gonna have to do something special to get them in the emulator. So let's go down to the PS3 emulator RPCS3. And we're gonna have to inject these files into the emulator proper. Now, usually when you first run it, you're gonna get a PUP to install firmware, but I didn't get that when I ran it. So I'm gonna assume that it's installed. Now I happen to have um, a link right here, but you're not gonna have that. So you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna have to go to run media deck and your SD card. Now that's providing it's installed on the SD card. Wherever you got your emulation folder, that's on you. But if you go to your ROMs, this is where we copied the files. All right, inside that PS3 folder, there are the two files. So I need to take that package and wrap file. I need to inject them directly into the emulator or install them. So this installs it on the fake hard drive. Now you could do a pre-compile on the caches that will save you some time the first time you run the game. We're not gonna do that, we'll wait to run the game. But you can see it's right here. And presumably you could play it from there, right? Um, however, while we're here, since it's already installed, there's no reason for us to keep this folder. It's no longer here. It's been installed inside of the PS3 emulator's fake hard drive. Okay, well now we wanna get this thing installed where we can play it, so we're gonna get it inside of Steam since Emulation Station's not gonna execute it. We're going to inject it into Steam using Steam ROM Manager. And again, this is one of those times when a mouse and keyboard really help out, or at least a mouse. So once Steam ROM Manager loads, we are going to toggle off all the parsers and we're gonna find a very special parser at the bottom down here. So we're gonna look for Sony's PlayStation 3, but there's two entries there and one of them probably didn't make sense until you watched this video. So the one that you would probably normally use would be extracted ISO PSN files, but the one we really are interested in are installed packages. Should make sense. Turn that one on, we'll hit preview and we'll hit parse. Hey, look at that. It picks it right up off the hard drive and it's giving me a nice easy way to run it. That is awesome. Change the artwork. I like what I'm seeing here, to be honest with you. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save it to Steam. Done adding and removing entries. Excellent. I think we're ready to give this another go. Gonna run to gaming mode. Go to your library. Hey, there it is. And it looks great. Better than I would have come up with if I had done it myself. Let's take a look. Now, of course you could set individual controls because it's got its own control scheme. Oh, wait a minute, what happened here? Firmware is missing. Okay, well, 
firmware is missing. Now it used to be in the PS3 emulator, it would automatically download and install firmware for you, but I'm guessing the recent Yuzu thing probably scared him off from doing that. So we're gonna have to install this ourselves. So we're gonna go back to desktop mode. We're gonna go back to the emulator and we're gonna install firmware. Now you're gonna have to get this firmware file on your own folks. The file name is right here. And if you type it into Google, I'm betting you'll find it. Now I've already stashed a copy of this inside my BIOS folder just for safekeeping, along with all my other emulation stuff, because obviously sometimes I need it, right? Now you can put that PUP file anywhere and then install it from there and then you can delete it. Once it's installed inside of the emulator, you're good. So I'm gonna go ahead and install my copy. It's gonna give you a little warning, that's fine. Hit yes. And there we go. Now, once you're done with this, it has to do its own sort of compiling of modules and whatnot for the operating system. We're not gonna sit here and watch this whole thing. We're gonna speed it up through the magic of digital editing. And uh, now we have a firmware, we have the game installed and we have the ticket installed that says we're allowed to use it. So we should be okay now, let's check it out. Back to gaming mode. Hey, look at that, even the current game icon kicks ass. That's great. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll start it up. Oh, much better. So now, so every game will have to compile its own shaders, its own modules, uh, technical stuff, but we're just gonna skip through it. And as the game actually runs and plays, you'll probably see more compiling shaders. Uh, it's just the nature of the beast. And you thought this was something unique to the Steam Deck? Well, it's not. Hey, the game looks like it's running just fine. And uh, I think we're good to go. Listen, um, I hope this helped you out. If it did, you guys know what to do. Like this video, subscribe, hit the bell, and uh, we'll see you at the next video. I'm gonna leave about a minute of gameplay here just so you can see sort of what this game looks like. I'm a huge fan of this. This came from an old uh, Amiga game called Super Stardust. And this one is absolutely crazy. If you're a twin stick shooter fan, if you're bullet hell twin stick shooter fan, uh, fantastic game. I'll just leave you with this and you can watch as much as you like. And again, thanks so much for stopping in. You are appreciated. Take care, everybody.